Hi everyone, I'm Steve. And I'm Cynthia. And we're the College Support Network. We have both worked in high schools as college advisors and currently have experiences working in admissions, financial aid, and academic advising. We're both passionate about college access and understand that applying to college can be really confusing. That's why we're here to help by providing you key information to empower you to achieve your college goals. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the California Community Colleges. Specifically, we're going to talk about admissions, cost and financial aid, and just some different reasons you should be looking into going to a California Community College. Let's get started. The California Community College system is the largest system of higher education in all of the United States. Their first campus was Fresno City College and it opened its doors in 1907. A fun fact is that Fresno City College is actually the second oldest community college in all of the United States, with the first being Joliet Junior College in Illinois. At the time of this video, there are 73 community college districts in California with a total of 116 campuses. Madeira Community College was actually the 116th community college that was added this year in 2020. In total, the California community colleges support and serve more than 2 million students. Additionally, every single year, they help more than 80,000 students transfer to a CSU or a UC campus. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely look into a community college. Another interesting fact is more than half of the students that graduate from a UC in a STEM degree, so this is science, technology, engineering, and math, actually started at a community college. 29% of UC grads and 51% of CSU grads started out at a community college as well. Similar to the UCs and the CSUs that we mentioned in the last couple of videos, the California community colleges also do a great job of supporting students with various backgrounds. This includes things such as race, ethnicity, age, gender, and income. Under the California Master Plan, which was established in the 1960s, all large cities in the state of California were required to have a community college district. Also under this plan, the California community colleges were given the sole function of supporting and serving any student that was willing to attend higher education. There are many classes and programs available at the community colleges. Non-credit courses are classes that do not earn you credit, but can provide you important skills and information. Some courses include English as a Second Language, or ESL, basic skills, and workforce preparation, such as classes that teach you how to write a cover letter and resume to prepare you for your job hunt. Community colleges also offer associate degrees, which are two-year programs that will help you prepare for a specific career or to transfer to a four-year institution. Associate degrees also require that students complete a general education or GE track. This track may be specific to the community college. If you're interested in applying to transfer to a Cal State or UC, you should look into the CSU GE breath and I get you requirements. Common associate degrees include web development, accounting, nursing, and radiology. It's important to note that not all colleges offer the same programs, so it's important to do your research. Certificate programs are similar to associate degrees in that they allow students to learn basic skills and knowledge in a specific field. However, they are generally shorter and require less time to complete because they don't have a GE requirement. Certificate programs are good options for students who may not wish to transfer, but do want an education so that they can enter the workforce as soon as possible. Common certificates include human resources, computer repair, and graphic design. Community colleges also offer students the opportunity to transfer to a four-year university to earn their bachelor's degree. Students can transfer after completing an associate's degree, which is referred to as an associate degree for transfer. We went over transfer pathways to the UCs and Cal States in our previous videos, so if you had a chance yet, make sure you check those out. We'll also make sure to provide links to them in the description box below. You can also be eligible to transfer to a four-year university without an associate's degree, provided that you complete the transfer requirements for those campuses. If you're interested in transferring to UC or Cal State, we highly recommend that you utilize assist.org. Assist is the official resource that will help you plan your transfer path from a California community college to a UC or Cal State. On the website, you can view the requirements you would need to fulfill along with the transfer agreements for these four-year schools. Each four-year school has its own different transfer requirements for its majors. It's important to plan ahead by using assist and speaking with your transfer counselor to ensure that you're on the right track. Lastly, although this is quite uncommon, some community colleges actually offer bachelor's degrees. 15 campuses offer bachelor's degrees. Some include Rio Hondo College with automotive technology and Foothill College offering dental hygiene. We'll leave a link in the description box below where you can view more information. So now that we've shared the different things that community colleges offer, we want to know what you're interested in pursuing at a community college. An associate's degree, an associate's degree to transfer, a certificate program to help you join the workforce or advance your career. Comment below, we'd love to hear it. 
So what are some different reasons why you should consider going to a community college? In our second video labeled why you should go to college, we discuss how having any sort of college degree or any sort of college experience actually opens doors for you to get a better paying job as well as getting more opportunities to land a job. Another reason to attend a community college is due to the low cost. The tuition rate of $46 per unit is considerably lower than the tuition rate at a four-year institution. If you're interested in transferring, attending a community college and then transferring to a four-year institution will save you a lot of money in the long run. Another reason to consider community colleges if you just aren't sure of what you want to do career-wise or you're not sure what you want to study. Like what Cynthia said, community colleges are very affordable, so if you're unsure of what classes you want to take, this allows you to take classes that you may be interested in at a very low rate. Additionally, community colleges have really great career centers and college advisors that could assist you with figuring out what you want to do in the future and then helping you develop a plan to get you from point A to point B whether that be transferring or just getting a certificate or associate's degree. Community colleges also offer direct paths to certain jobs. Some jobs don't require a four-year degree. So if you're interested in becoming a chef, a dental assistant, or perhaps a real estate agent, you don't have to pursue a bachelor's degree for those occupations. Many community colleges offer programs that are about two years in length that will provide you the skills you need to pursue those jobs. The next reason involves both work and family obligations as well as accommodating a busy schedule. Like we mentioned earlier in this video, there are a lot of community colleges in California. This just means that there's always going to be a local community college near you. This is great for people that need to be near home at all times just because of work or family obligations. Additionally, community colleges offer classes online at night and even over the weekends. This means if your schedule is busy, you should still be able to find courses that accommodate that busy schedule. Another big reason is the opportunities offered by community colleges. Some students know that they want to pursue a two-year degree. Some other students may want to pursue a four-year degree, but may not have been accepted into any four-year institutions or the four-year institution of their choice when they applied while they were a high school student. Attending a community college allows students to take classes they need to transfer to a four-year institution if they decide to do so and earn an associate's degree along the way. We want to emphasize that any path you take in the pursuit of a higher education is valid. Every person has their own journey and timeline, and we're here to support you achieve your college goals. And I think the journey aspect is really important, right? When I was a college advisor working in high schools, I told my students all the time, it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you end up. So regardless if you start straight out of high school or you go into community college first, or even if you take a couple years off to work, what's important is where you end up at the end. Like I mentioned earlier, we're both here to support you, but you should also know that there are many services and programs offered at the community colleges to support you as well. There are support services for a lot of different special populations, such as undocumented students, current and former foster youth, students who are homeless or at risk of being homeless, students with disabilities, veterans, and so many more. So those are some reasons to attend a community college. And now we want to know what reasons inspire you to want to go to community college. And also comment below with any reasons we may have missed that you feel are important. So how do you get admitted into a California community college? That's a great question. Like I mentioned earlier, the California community colleges is available to anyone that's willing to attend. And for our non-California resident population, there might be special circumstances and requirements that you have to meet. And this is why we really emphasize and recommend students to contact their local community college campus or the college the campus that they want to attend, just because there might be different requirements. Like we mentioned in a previous video, students that are currently in high school also have the opportunity to attend a community college via dual enrollment. This is a great opportunity for students to earn college credit, so we really recommend you to contact your guidance counselor if you want more information. Also, we really recommend you to watch our Why You Go To College video just because we provide a lot of information there. So we will leave a link somewhere here and down in the description for you to watch. CCC Apply is a general community college website for California and it provides information to different community colleges that you may be interested in. We really recommend you all to do your research and become familiar with this website just because every California community college is going to have different requirements or a different deadline. So because we're filming this in summer of 2020, I wanted to provide just a quick little update regarding the pandemic and how the California community colleges have responded to it. As you could probably assume, everything's currently online now. The enrollment process is now fully automated and you can start by visiting the CCC Apply website to learn more. 
After you apply and enroll, the campus will email you with information about resources and next steps that you need to take. The California Community Colleges have stated that they will be offering online and telephone appointments with counselors for students that are interested in talking about their educational and career goals. For this upcoming fall 2020 term, the California Community Colleges have also declared that they will be transitioning to online-only delivery for their courses. In regards to coursework and grades, the California Community Colleges also have some different rules that students should be aware of. The first update involves retaking a course. Students can retake a course attempted during the pandemic and colleges are being directed to disregard the previous grade when completing a GPA once the course has been retaken or completed. The second update involves deadlines for pass and no pass grades. The deadline for selecting a pass or no pass option instead of a letter grade is being waived. Students should, however, be aware that the University of California and the California State University system requires major related courses to be completed with a letter grade and many other transfer institutions restrict the number of transfer units that may be taken as a pass, no pass. This is why we really recommend talking to your transfer and guidance counselors. The final update involves probation or unsatisfactory progress. No pass grades will not be considered in probation and dismissal procedures. Students attempting to complete a course under the current situation rather than just withdraw will not be negatively affected should they ultimately be unable to successfully complete the course. As always, we'll leave a link below in the description regarding the California Community Colleges and the response to the pandemic. We recommend all students to take a look for future updates. Finally, I'll be going over cost and financial aid available at the California Community Colleges. 50% of students actually don't pay fees to attend a California Community College. For California residents, the cost is $46 per unit. For non-residents, the cost is also $46 per unit with an additional charge per unit. This additional charge varies among campuses, so it's important to check out the campus in which you're interested in applying to. To apply for financial aid, students must submit either the FAFSA or the California Dream Act. If you are a U.S. citizen or an eligible non-citizen, which includes permanent residents or other special statuses, you should submit the FAFSA. Undocumented students who qualify under AB 540 criteria in California should submit the California Dream Act. Both of these applications are available as early as October 1st, and you should submit them as soon as possible. We'll be making future videos dedicated to both the FAFSA, California Dream Act, and other aspects of financial aid, so make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for those. The California College Promise Grant is a form of free money that waives enrollment fees for eligible California residents. For many campuses, you can apply to this grant online through CCC Apply. Some others may require that you complete an additional form. As always, it's important to check the financial aid website for the campus you're interested in applying to to view if you're eligible. The Cal Grant is another form of free money available for California residents. There are three Cal Grants, A, B, and C. When you apply for financial aid, the California Student Aid Commission, or CSAC for short, will determine your eligibility. Keep in mind that you can only receive one of the three. The Cal Grant pays for tuition and fees, but the amounts will vary depending upon the institution that you attend. Keep this in mind if you plan on transferring because the amount that you receive at a California Community College may change compared to what you receive once you get to a four-year institution. To apply for the Cal Grant, you'll need to submit either the FAFSA or the California Dream Act depending upon which one you're eligible for. Additionally, you'll need to submit the Cal Grant GPA verification form by March 2nd. If you're a high school student, your high school or district may actually submit this for you automatically on your behalf. However, it's best to contact your counselor to confirm if this is the case or if you would need to take any action and initiate the step for them. The Chafee Grant is another form of free money available to current and former foster youth. It provides up to $5,000 a year for current and former foster youth who were in the foster care system for at least one day between the ages of 16 and 18. In addition to submitting the FAFSA or California Dream Act, you'll also have to submit an online application. We'll also provide a link below for you to access that. If you're a current or former foster care youth, you should become familiar with the Guardian Scholars Program. The Guardian Scholars Program exists at California Community Colleges and some four-year schools. The program supports current and former foster care youth by providing services such as financial aid, mentoring, academic advisement, and tutoring. If you're a current or former foster care youth, make sure you check out the different schools that you're interested in applying to to see if they offer this program. The California Community Colleges have created their own financial aid resource called ICanAffordCollege.com. Check out their website to view more information regarding applications and the different types of aid available at the community colleges. We hope that this was useful. If you have any questions regarding your specific circumstances, please contact the financial aid office directly at the campus you're interested in applying to. Hey y'all, thanks for joining us today. If you learned something new about the California community colleges, please give us a thumbs up. It really does help our channel out. 
If you want to learn more, make sure you click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified the second we post a new video. Peace.